Okay, in this video, I'm just going to go through and explain a little bit about what this final project is going to look like. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using Desmos to create an art project um, by using all the parent functions that you know about and the transformations. So there's a three-page PDF document that you can find on Canvas that has all of the detailed explanations for how to work through this and the requirements for the project. In addition, if you have specific questions about doing something in Desmos, you can just Google it. Desmos is a very frequently used website, so there's lots of answers and forums online. You'll be able to find answers to them. So basically what you're going to do, your first step is to decide what picture you want to create. Like here, the person in this picture created the Powerpuff Girls. Um, so what I would do, let me just show you what I would do. What I would do is I'd say, okay, I want to make a snowman or something like that. And then just Google a picture of a snowman, choose which one you like. Um, I would choose a shape that's going to have a variety of um, kind of shapes and lines in it because one of the requirements for the project is that you have to use at least four different kinds of parent functions. That means you've got to use like straight lines and absolute values, maybe a quadratic. So I'm going to choose this first snowman because I like, you know, his body's got the curved, he's got a scarf on, which kind of looks like a quadratic, he's got the straight arms. So I'll just choose this guy. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to save him to my desktop. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go into Desmos. And when you first get to, if you just type in desmos.com, you'll get to this page. Hit the graphing calculator, and then it'll take you to this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import the picture of the snowman into my Desmos page. So I'm going to hit this little plus right here for add item. I'm going to add an image, and then I'll just find wherever I save my snowman, and it's going to put the snowman in right in the center of my graph. Now if you don't want the snowman right in the middle, you can change the center of your snowman to 4 4, wherever you want to put him. For now, I'll just leave him right in the middle of my graph. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create and write equations that kind of trace the outline of my snowman. So, for example, I see that his scarf almost looks like it's it could be modeled by a quadratic equation. So I'm going to say, okay, what kind of quadratic equation am I going to need if I want to trace the outline of the scarf? I'll start with just the original x squared. Okay. Then let's say I'm trying to trace the very bottom of his scarf. It looks like, if I zoom in here, right, the bottom of his, oh, the bottom of his scarf is about at 0.25. So I know I've got to shift this graph up by at least a quarter. Now do you see how the bottom of this is lined up with the bottom of this scarf? Now I've just got to make my graph wider. It's too steep right now. So I want to do a horizontal or a vertical compression which means that I multiply by a number that's smaller than one right out front. What I'm going to do is I'm kind of just going to guess numbers. So one half is shallower, but it's not quite right. One fourth is about right. Now I'm going to get one fifth. So if I have one fifth x squared plus 0.25, this blue line right here doesn't match up perfectly with my snowman scarf, but it does match up pretty well. So I am going to let that be the bottom outline of his scarf. Now, the, right now the line is blue. Say I want to make it red so it matches the color of his scarf. I just click and hold on this blue dot right here. I'm just going to change it to red. You can change it to whatever color you want. I don't really care if the colors exactly match the picture that you chose. Okay. Now what I want to do is I look at my picture and I say, well, I'm glad that my parabola matches up with the scarf, or my quadratic matches up with a scarf, but the graph also goes a lot further to the left and the right than what I need it to. So I'm going to tell Desmos to only graph this red line from this point to this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, if this is where I want it to start, that's x equals negative 1.37. So over here, in, I'm going to use these little curly brackets. I'm going to put negative 1.37 is less than x. See how it stopped now? is less than, and the furthest to the right I want it to go, I think was like 1.6, but I'm going to have to check that one. So let me come over here, I want it to stop right here, it's about 1.28. So I'll come back and tell it to stop the red graph at 1.28. Okay, 
So now I've got that part of the parabola that I really like, and it's only mapped out on part of the, on part of my graph. Okay. Now I would need to go through and think about recreating all of these other um, all of these other lines. So let's do an easy one would be to do the top part of the scarf. The equation is going to be pretty similar to this one, so I'm just going to copy it down and paste it. The biggest difference is that the top line of my scarf is going to be a little bit higher up. So instead of going up 2.25, let's go up 0.5 and see if that matches up. And it looks like the center point matches up, but I need my graph to be a little bit steeper, okay? Which means that I need to have less of a vertical compression. So let's make it one third, maybe even one half. Nice. See that green matches up really closely now with that top layer of the scarf? Well, let's change it to red. Well, maybe. So it matches the other part of the scarf. And I also need to change where the graph is stopping and starting. So my smallest x is negative 1.25. My biggest x is 1.08. So if I adjust those, now I can see that I've got the bottom of my scarf outlined and the top of my scarf outlined. Okay. Just Here's just one feature you can use. If you click these little buttons right here, if you click the colors on and off, it's going to kind of hide or show the lines. So you can even turn off the snowman picture and see, okay, well, there's my, my scarf right there, the top and the bottom of my scarf. Okay. So now what I need to do is I need to figure out a way to connect the top and the bottom of my scarf. And I might try to do this nice curved feature, or I might just do a line straight down. So just know that you can look at your picture and you can say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to alter parts of it, right? I don't have to match this picture that I chose exactly. And you're going to go through and you're going to have to match, you have to kind of map over all these lines in your picture that you chose using your equations that you know. So one of the requirements is that you have to use at least four of these functions right here. Linear, quadratic, square root, absolute value, cubic, or cube root. You can choose any four, but you have to use at least four different ones, okay? And then if you go down a little bit further on this, here's your checklist. You have to use at least 40 transformations. So you have to use four different kinds of parent functions, and you have to, in the end, have 40 different equations. So that means that if you come here, you're gonna have at least 40 different equations kind of listed here on the left side of your page. So that by the end, once you have all 40 in, or more, if you were to turn off the snowman picture, I could look at that and say, that is a snowman. Okay. Other requirements is that you've got to have some sort of, it, it's got to look like a picture, right? I, I'm not an artist, so I don't expect you to be an artist. you got to have some sort of artistic touch to it. And you've got to have some colors that make sense. So like, I don't need my snowman to be, the body of my snowman to be five different colors, right? So I need to make sure that um, I'm using colors that kind of make sense. Again, you need to make sure that you use at least four different kinds of functions. And then the last thing is the project reflection. If you just come down here, um, your reflection is just, it should be really short. You don't write more than like three sentences. Write your name, date, class period. Write the name of your picture. Mine would probably just be snowman. And then you're just going to choose one part of your picture and explain why you use the functions you did. So I would say, well, when I was using the scarf, when I was making the scarf, I noticed that the scarf was kind of like a flattened out U shape. So I decided that I was going to use a quadratic function. And then I knew that I needed to move the quadratic function up and then I needed to do a vertical compression on it so that it matched up with the lines. That's it. That's the whole reflection. Type it in a Google Doc or whatever, and then you'll send it to me. You're also going to send me your Desmos page. So to send me your Desmos page when it's all done, you're going to come hit this little share graph button. And it's going to give you a shareable link. Okay, then you're just going to hit copy. It's going to copy that. You'll go to an email and you'll email me the link. Okay. Now, here's something that you will probably be interested in. You're probably going to want to title your graph. I hope I'm not logged in. Um, let me log in really fast. So you, when you come to Desmos, as you start creating this, you're going to want to create an account here just so that you can save your work. So I'm going to log in with Google. You'll be able to, too. Um, and then you can title the graph. I'll call mine Snowman. Then when you come back, to say you, say you work on this for 30 minutes and you're like, man, I really need a break. Then you'll just hit save. 
okay? And then when you come back to Desmos, you'll hit these three little bars right here, and you can just come down and say, okay, I want to I wanna work on my snowman graph. And um, you open it, and it'll bring you back to this page, and you can just keep working on it. Okay. If you have any questions about this as you're going through it, just let me know. Send me an email. We can get on Zoom. We can You can share your screen with me and we can work through it together. If you're having any problems with it, just let me know. Just make sure that you're using these features that we've gone over. And those features are also all online. You can just Google them.